we're here at the Green Gathering um, from the Hare Krishna group and we're putting on, we're doing our, uh, we're famous for our free vegetarian food. We fed the whole place all week and uh, it's nice because showing people alternative uh, lifestyle, alternative way of eating, uh, karma free diet, no dead animals, no mad cow disease, no hoof and mouth, all those things. So uh, showing some way where the idea is to reduce your karma and uh, lead a more peaceful and happier lifestyle. Um, during the week, we're, we're, we spend most of our time, we run a day centre where we distribute meals for homeless people, we run computer courses, we get people jobs, we do a, you know, what we can for people mostly disadvantaged from drug abuse or whatever, so we, we help out there. So that's our merry men here are from that particular group. Hare Krishna. Can I, can I ask you who Krishna is? Krishna, Krishna is not a name for God. Like God has many names, Allah, Jehovah, Buddha, Rama, Krishna, Christ. So Krishna means all attractive. So, like, uh, so it's a, a name for God that he tr attracts the whole universe. Just like in my language uh, from Ireland, it's Dia. You say Dia Gwit, Gudugga Dia Slana, Walyahu. You know, Dia is a name for God. So, in different uh, people describe him from different qualities. So, Krishna is, um, we see him as, a, as the main name for God, you could say. Okay. <laughs> Tell me about the Big Green Gathering. Or? Big Green Gathering, as, you, as you've been here, is a five-day family event which actually combines sustainable lifestyles with entertainment. It hopefully gives everybody the opportunity to learn more, to find out about things that they can do when they go back home, and also in a whole arena of enjoyment and fun. You remind me a bit of um, the Green Party leader, Jean Lambert. You're yeah, a little bit like her, I think. I was chair of the Green Party. Were you? Oh, OK. Well, I filmed Hugo and stuff recently, before we got scandalised. Oh, right. <laughs> Which is a bit of a shame, really. Yes. But I remember Jean Lambert, she was saying, oh, well, if it's not fun, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm going to buy that. So. If it's not fun, it's not my party. <laughs> Seven years of mother, this voyage of the blue. Seven long years thinking, sweet Nancy of you. But when I return again, service I'll be free. No more need I for sailing it out of the lonely sea.
obvious and not everybody's going to agree and one of the way one of the reasons you have consensus is trying to argue and sort out and find ways in which you agree I just want to come back to this nuclear power issue I did fly to Taiwan many years ago and they were trying to build some more nuclear power stations there and all the waste goes to a little island called Orchid Island, where the Aborigines live. I mean, this is so typical, isn't it? You hide your waste and take it to somewhere where the disadvantaged live. And I was shown pictures of babies that were born with defects. I've also seen those pictures in the South Sea Islands when I met somebody who lived on one of the South Sea Islands where tests were being made. Obviously, all those things influence you. You see those things, and it's all right for us. We don't have to suffer those things. And I look around, and I see other people suffering things that are totally unacceptable. We should be ashamed that we allow those sort of things to go on. But it always seems to me that those ones that really suffer from high technology, which is not safe, is the ones that live in poverty, and don't use that technology anyway. Local wildlife rescue centre, Secret World Wildlife Rescue, um, and today we're here campaigning for badgers, the black and white campaign, um, which is about uh, uh, the government trying to um, um, cull badgers for uh, to reduce TB when it's proven by their own science that it doesn't work. So we're here um, campaigning today, getting signatures for a petition, which we'll send off to government. We've got about uh, 7,000 now, and um, and it's going really well. Is it for, for TB or...? The bovine TB, yeah. Uh, that's right, yeah. And basically, over the experiment, in the first, after six months, they found that bovine TB levels had gone down by 20% on average. Mm -hmm. And then after a further six months, because of something called the edge effect, where basically um, populations of badger will move into that given area, 
um, and then actually produce a 22% increase. So really, you know, at best, the, How's it uh, work? at first the bovine TV levels went down by 20% yeah. Yeah. the first six months, and then at a following six months after that, TB levels have actually risen again by 22%. So worse than it already was? Yeah, by 2%. What? I don't, I'm sorry, I don't understand. 20%? <laughs> yeah. But why, 22%. Did, why, does it, why does it go up? Well, it's actually something called the edge yeah. effect. Yeah. So if you've got, say, for example, a 100 square mile area yeah. with, no, with no or negligible amounts of badgers in it, yeah. then there'll be uh, the rest of the populations of badgers will then try to move into those, okay. those territories. Right. And by that movement, then you'll have an increase in, in TB. Okay, because they're spreading more than that, 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 right. they're moving around more than they would do that's normally. Because otherwise badgers are territorial, they'll stay yeah. in one place, and, you know. They won't have that degree of movement. Yeah. So, so yeah. Right. Is that yeah. more or less? There's some more information there if you'd like. I think my brain isn't. Is that enough? enough? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's enough better info. But, but um, yeah, if you'd like to sign that, that'd be wonderful. Yeah.